All right, welcome back everyone. So uh, we've got our next panelist for today, an experienced leader and solution architect with the single goal of empowering business users to achieve more with Microsoft Power Platform. I'd like to call Uday Adhikari to talk on how to build chatbots in Dataverse for Teams. Hello Uday, welcome to the show. Good morning, good evening. Actually, for you guys, and probably for most of you, it's probably uh, evening, so but I'll just say hello. You can hear me, right? Yes. Okay. And uh, you can see me as well? Yes. Awesome. Let me know when I can start. Whenever you're ready. All right. And so, uh, Phil, I mean, if you could monitor the chat for me, uh, I can definitely come back and uh, kind of catch up on the questions a little bit later. But uh, I'll start with just uh, some presentation and then I know we have 45 minutes of presentation and then 15 minutes of Q&A. Love to answer any questions. It doesn't need to be related to just this topic. Anything Power Platform, I can, I'll try to, I'll try my best to answer. All right, uh, let me share my screen here. So I rarely use Zoom. So um, uh, allow me, give me here a second. Uh, I'm a Microsoft kind of focus guy. So it's always Teams, Teams, Teams. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, again, um, uh, good evening, good morning, uh, wherever you are. Um, welcome. Thanks for joining uh, the entire actually event, and uh, appreciate you guys kind of hanging out and probably towards close up near near closer to your end of the day. So uh, appreciate you guys kind of sitting in and trying to listen uh, uh, what I'm going to present here. Uh, okay, so a little bit about me. Uh, I'm originally from Nepal, um, been working here in the US for uh, many years. Um, so focus that we're basically pro, pro dev, right? Uh, C Sharp, ASP.NET, uh, ASP even like classic ASP. For all this focus on web, web, web uh, database, and then went over to SharePoint for many years. And then um, this low code thing came up about three, four years ago when Microsoft Microsoft product power platform is, um, I'm going to assume that a lot of people who are joining here are either maybe heard or have not heard. So I'm, I'll try to do a justice of giving a quick overview of what power platform is. Given the time we have, I wouldn't be uh, able to go deep, but uh, if anyone has any questions, uh, follow up with me on uh, LinkedIn or that much to, to Randall right there, or you can ask questions uh, when we have that Q&A session uh, 10, 15 minutes towards the end. Uh, like I said, I'll try to answer, but if we didn't get we run out of time, uh, happy to talk to anyone uh, after afterwards. So, uh, so then about four, I mean, let's go back four or five years ago. That's when I jumped into Power Platform from SharePoint and never looked back. Uh, I'm not saying SharePoint is bad, uh, custom app dev is bad. It's just that my mind and my passion and everything is in Power Platform now because there's a lot of innovation. Um, Microsoft is constantly creating this, uh, uh, adding new features, right? And and so I also go and talk uh, about the same product, uh, different events, and because of that com uh, community contribution, uh, they awarded uh, me MVP, Microsoft Most Valuable Professional. This is my second year. So, and I also run, um, and I live in Austin, Texas. And so I run uh, multiple user groups here, uh, specifically SharePoint, but it's going to be uh, more power platform focus uh, going forward. Um, okay, so that's about me. And currently I worked at uh, Accenture as a senior manager, business integration and architecture. God, that's a long title. But what I do is uh, Power Platform Focus. All right, uh, that's a little bit about me. Um, so Kritika, again, um, if you uh, don't hear me or anything, just uh, give me a shout, all right? I'm not monitoring uh, chat, so you'll have to come unmute and then uh, you'll have to remind me. So what what, what is Power Platform? Uh, Microsoft Power Platform, it's actually, it came kind of like a spin-off from Dynamics 365 or um, the older version of Dynamics and went into the cloud Dynamics 365. And then it was the, the, the things that really, really work. They spun up and said, okay, we're going to create a platform where we're going to allow citizen developers. So citizen developer term is, is widely used where you are close to the kind of like an SME or you're close to the problem with a little bit of technical savviness, not necessarily you have the, 
Nikon, you know how to write custom code. So they know the business problem. So this is the citizen developer. Those are the, like, basically they are close to the problem. And they're one to solve the problem using technology. They're the champions, they, they bring the energy, but they don't have the, uh, the background, the technical depth and knowledge of being able to write uh, custom code. Uh, right. And so those those are called as a citizen developer. So this is basically you can you can from a high level you can think this as a drag and drop um, uh, type. But you can go pro dev, right? So it's not just drag and drop. You can start from drag and drop, create an app, and then but it gives you other framework where you can start writing code. If you are playing in Excel, writing macros, formulas, then this is this is your logical place to land where you can create a composite enterprise app power bi is dashboarding power apps is intake like form designer ui uh, power autumn is a workflow right and workflow engine and then you have power virtual agent which is the bot which is what we're going to be focusing on today and underlying there it has you see that dataverse uh data connectors ai builder these are basically the four pillars of power platform and then there are other add-ons that big makes it even powerful ai builder is another big component of how you can intelligently automate uh, some of these systems right business processes you have repetitive tasks you have using rpa robotic processing automation so just at a high level um yeah the four pillars power platform uh, Power BI is your dashboard, uh, KPIs and stuff like that. Power BI is your UI layer. Power Automate is your workflow engine. And then this is the bot. All right. Um, so why Power Platform? Because uh, if it wasn't for this number of connectors that are already available in the ecosystem, it's hard to create, right? You'd have to call an API. So what this, what this does is each of a lot of these connectors are a wrapper around an API that's that let's say uh, Workday or uh, Google Drive or um, um, Dropbox, right? So they all have API and then they create a connector uh, using that API and wrapper and that basically gives you an UI to connect and do certain things. Not everything that you can do in Dropbox, you will be able to do. The things that are exposed in that connector are the things that you can do, which are called actions in Power Automate. So because of these connectors, um, it allows citizen developer right, to easily connect. All you're doing is saying, hey, I want to connect to Dropbox and I want to do these things. It's already defined for you. You don't have to do, you don't have to know anything about the API and also that's that's why this is very, very powerful. It's it's uh and these number of connectors i mean if you had talked to me about two years ago we were hovering around 180 200 and last two years i've seen exponential growth right being able to create these many connectors uh it's it's amazing so imagine what you can do with all of these being able to talk from here to there to there getting from facebook twitter right all of these integration if if Facebook and integration is part of your business, then for marketing reason, absolutely, why not use uh, Power Automate or Power Platform? All right. Um, so that's at the high level, and then down you see how Power Platform is more at a, a business layer label, and then you go to Azure Services. You be you have AZ, uh, API management. Um, which is Azure API management, which is another powerful tool. Azure functions that you can write unit or function using code, you know, C Sharp, um, TypeScript, uh, that four or five different languages are supported there. Uh, cognitive services, another project that I recently worked on, it was super uh, useful uh, Azure resources that you can automate. Basically, what I'm trying to say is you're not limited to just Power Platform. Like you start there and you said, gee, this doesn't work here. So how can I do? And so you do go and look into Azure and see what you have in there. Uh, cognitive services, under cognitive services, there is an API that allows you to read documents, all right? I, yeah, let's say you have thousand pages of a document and then you wanna read 
uh, automatically. There's an AI builder too, but if you want to do in that Azure side, cost-wise, it's going to be a little bit less. So you can you can leverage all of these powers, bring in, and Power Platform becomes even powerful. So you're not just limited to uh, oh, Power Platform, Power Platform, Power Platform. It's a low code. That's not a real development. Absolutely. If you think about that just a power platform label? Yes, you, the answer may be yes, but you have an extensibility. So you can definitely make it enterprise ready uh, applications. Um, okay. Um, I'm going to skip this, otherwise I will not have time. This is about power apps. Uh, basically it's uh, you build one time, it deployed into uh, different devices, right? So can be tablet, phone, desktop. So you're only developing one app. It's a mobile app, actually. You're, when you create an app, you're creating a mobile app, native mobile app, but it can be rendered on uh, desktop also. Um, I'm gonna skip the Power Automate also. Uh, basically, Power Automate is the uh, cloud-based um, workflow engine. And this is the uh, Power Virtual and This is what we're gonna be talking about today. Um, obviously, it's in the cloud, which is means available uh, 24 seven. Um, uh, I'll go into details on this one. So I'm going to skip this also. Uh, here are a couple of things. Okay, so some of these challenges. Um, I don't think I'll have time to go over all of these slides. And uh, I like to do some demos and uh, get to the meat of it. So I'm going to skip, um, this is just like why you want to do like uh, the challenges, repeating, uh, people don't want to contact um, as, like a service desk because it takes time, you're on hold, you're say, uh, select one, you first you have to listen to all of the options. One, this, two, the, and you may need the 10, maybe the one that you need, but you have to listen to everything. People don't have, I mean, first they don't have time, they don't have patience, right? It's always, and then the other thing is, oh, you're not going going to get a prompt response. They're just creating a ticket and they'll say, oh, then we need to do research and then this and that. So people don't want to use that. So in that case, what you do is you need to give a, you need to build, you can build a knowledge base with the, and then put a bot on top. They're getting instant answers. And that's why it's critical. Bot is um, very critical in your, business operation, right? Employee satisfaction. All right, so all of those, let me um, go can help. And this is exactly what I mentioned. Uh, I'm gonna go, uh, so when you talk about power virtual is in life cycle, uh, right here, you create a for simple, um, it's a, I'll, I'll, I mean, obviously I'll, I'll do the demo here quickly. Um, you can, you create a bot and then the, with inside a bot, it's called topic. And then topic can be, you can actually, let's say you already have a site that has FAQs, a Q and question and answer. Um, you can extract from there, put it in the uh, Power Virtual Legend, create a topic, and then you can go from there. Uh, and then but basically you author, you look at the uh, people come in and tag, do the, 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 trigger the chat and they're talking. And then you have this analytics to say, are people getting what they need? Uh, are they going through all of those questions and are they satisfied? You can also do a survey towards the end. So by looking at this, you, you come back and then repeat, right? The same thing. Okay, let's go update this. In fact, actually now, um, just recently about maybe a month or two ago, uh, there's a new AI functionality that got added into Power Virtual Legend, which allows you to find duplicate topics. Um, you may have a big bot and then you, you have lots of topics. And then if the, if the topics are very similar, the, the bot will intend intelligently using AI, right? Find that, oh, there are two topics that are similar. So I'm going to route it you over there. So those reporting also are available. Uh, I'm going to skip some of these. Um, yeah, same again. Um, the... Power Virtual isn't by itself, does not have connectors uh, natively. You have to, from Power Virtual isn't, you have to call Power Automate and Power Automate has all these connectors and then we can get data from, let's say, 
Um, someone is asking about weather in the chat box. So is, is my zip code, a city name. And then you go, you send that information to uh, Power Automate. Power Automate goes to the weather API and then gets the weather for that city that whatever the uh, question was. Or I can say, I need an answer to uh, what's my status on the, on the ticket that I recently created, right? So you can, you send that request over to Power Automate from, from bot. And then Power Automate goes to your source of record where you may, or where you are maintaining um, a ticket, like ticketing system, and and finds their status and sends it back, uh, sends back the request. So as of now, Power Virtual is and does not have direct connectors. It's using Power Automate, but it is coming. It's in the roadmap. Uh, Power Virtual Agent will get its own native connector, so it's much easier. You don't have to call Flow all the time. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm using Power Automate and Flow interchangeably here, but what the Power, Automate's, Power Automate was called Flow before and it was renamed, but you're still, the, the name is still, this is what this for multiple years, so we still use that name. Um, so Power Automate and Flow, they are the same. Um, real quick, Kritika, am I going fast? Are people understanding? Uh, can I get a real quick like gut check on, uh, because I want to respect everybody's time here, right? They're, they're spending time, so I want to make them that, uh, feel like they're, uh, they're getting what they're here for. Uh, I think you're going fine. Okay. Um, I don't see anybody in the audience complaining yet. So. Okay. Yeah, if uh, anybody, if, if you think, uh, if I hear like two or three of those saying you're going fast, 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 then uh, let me know, I can go slow. I'm just worried that I have a lot of content and I'm trying to crunch, uh, but at the same time, I wanna do justice right off your time. I wanna be respectful of that time, of, of everybody's time here. Okay, uh, with that, I'm gonna continue then. Awesome. All right, um, okay, so uh, Microsoft, Dataverse environment. So the environment concept will come when you are creating. So environment is nothing but a container. And in that container, you, you have um, bot, you have Power Apps, you have Power Automate. And, and then when you are ready to deploy, you're deploying that, uh, uh, sorry, well, you can deploy environment, but we didn't, okay. So environment is, Again, a container, a logical separation, basically. Within that, you have all of these components. It wouldn't, even, even those components, you could have 20 bots, 50 apps, 100 Power Automate. It's, it's going to be hard to manage and see which one is related to which one. And then the concept calls uh, comes uh, into play, it's called solution. So environment, solution, and in that solution, think that as a project, right, uh, from a pro dip, perspective, it's a, it's a project within that project, then you say, you know what, uh, this bot, this app, and this Power Automate belongs to this project, so I'm gonna put this into a solution. And so that's the uh, concept that you have in, which is application lifecycle management in uh, Power Platform. Environment, solution, and then put up everything related in the solution, and then you deploy solution from one environment to another environment. Here is, uh, so, in, it's talking about um, the, the the environment, right? The, the label in the inside of that you have bot. Uh, when you create the bot for the first time, it actually creates an environment and behind the scene. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll go through that one. So I I'm gonna skip some of these. Uh, all of these will come into play. What are the trigger phrases? Pre-built entities, custom entities. I'll see how much I can uh, cover here. Um, like the system topics are there, right? It uh, predefined uh, uh, topics. There are some examples for you to get started. So you can reverse engineer from there or learn from there and then build your own. Um, all right. So typical, right? Create bot, create new topic, create new conversation, test, test your bot, publish your bot, measure your bot, meaning that uh, you create here, topic, conversation, test, publish, and then this is your analytics. It's all, all, everything is out of the box. And then you re iterate through again. I mean, you find something, people are dropping after a second question on this specific topic. That means you, you got to tweak that topic. Something is wrong, right? Why is everybody dropping after second conversation? 
So it will give you some stats and then you uh, build on it. Um, I'm going to skip this. Um, this I thought it was going to be useful, but licensing is a hard topic. Um, the one that we're trying to do, it, it's, it's a free version, but uh, I'll also show you the, the standalone. Okay, um, uh, that probably doesn't apply. Uh, I should have cleaned this. Um, this is more content that I regularly do for uh, other events also, uh, but I should have probably cleaned this. Okay, so type of conversation topic, right? Informational, sometimes it's only about where do I find my benefit information? Um, who is our HR coordinator? Uh, things like that, like basic questions, but you need an answer. When you need an answer, you need an answer. You don't know who to ask, right? When you, uh, like I just joined uh, Accenture and I'm actually a little bit lost. I mean, this is my second, almost second week. Um, and there's lots of information in there. When you work for, I, 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 think, I, I think there are like 500,000, 550,000 employees around the world. And that's a huge company. So bought, and they have bots to help to for for a new jo joiner. Hey, here's a bot for IT. Here's a bot for HR. Here's a bot for this. It's super helpful. So uh, regardless of whether it's small or large company, before this I worked at a smaller company. Same, we had same problem, right? When you need something, you need something. If you have a bot, you can people will use that. If you try, if you have to call someone or email someone, people will basically either delay. Right, or just don't forget about it. Try to search, search is not good, but is, is there. So informational, more about how do I do this? Um, uh, what is our um, uh, sick day policy? What is our vacation policy? Those are straightforward answer. Not realistic, not specific to you, but more from a company. What is our vision, Com company uh, vision, right? And goals. So that's, those are informational. Task completion. Um, I want to do, let's say, check on the status on my ticket, like I said, mentioned earlier. Like, and then troubleshooting will be, this is not working, how do I do? Uh, how do I um, um, uh, reset my password? Or I don't know, I need to order, order a new software. So all of these can be integrated. Some of these are informational, no action need to be taken. This is obviously in this case, uh, if I want a status on something, then I will use Power Automate to connect to your line of business application and get status. And troubleshooting will be, uh, it go through, ask question, answer, question, answer. You build that. And then if they're able to, if the bot is able to answer, great. If not, route it to a human being uh, or as in, right? So, okay. Is there a question here? I see two uh, or just a comment. Okay. Uh, trigger phases. Uh, so yes, um, in fact, actually, let me just go to uh, the bot. Uh, all right, so I am going to get, clean up my, uh, I think this is good. Okay, so, Power virtual isn't, I'm gonna bring it. Oh, am I, is this still sharing? I, do you see my, uh, set the, the web uh, dot power va dot Microsoft com? Or do you still see my slide? Uh, web dot bar va. Okay, awesome. All right. So uh, before I go here, um, there's a shortcut link uh, called uh, aka.ms dot try uh, PBA. So that's the shortcut link. Um, I'll, I'll have I'll have those links on uh, uh, Did I copy? Yes, I'll send it over on the chat. Oh, I think I was just talking with the moderator. Uh, let me go here. Okay. Uh, all right. So here, uh, when I go try pba.com, this is the standalone Power Virtual Listen. Uh, don't get scared. If you have Microsoft, uh, like Office 365 account, you can 
uh, get a trial, like, oh, sorry, uh, let me actually click on get a free trial. If you don't have the license, actually, when you sign in, it will say you don't have license or your license is expired. Don't tell Microsoft, but uh, my trial, I've been using this for almost, almost two years now. Every 30 days, it will remind me like, hey, your trial is expiring. I was like, cool, yeah, I'm still developing. I'm researching. So I just click on it so I don't have to buy. I haven't bought a PBA license. This is my own tenant. I haven't bought any PBA license uh, yet. So they may enforce uh, in the near future, but uh, you can sign up. If you have Office 365 license, uh, definitely you can go in and you can sign up for uh, this one. So when you go this here, this is the interface you see. So what are these? Um, up here is your um, bot, like what bot you have created. I, if I click on it, it will tell me I'm on my default environment and I have three bots in here. And this is the use, UC demo is the one that I am uh, on right now. So I can create a new bot, right? Uh, and I'm gonna walk over a couple of things in here and then topics for this bot, the topic are basically, so bot is like the, uh, uh, again, I'm, I'm loosely using the term container. So bot is kind of like the parent and then you have different topics within that bot. And then one topic could be, uh, give me status on something. Another could, could be, hey, create an incident for me, right? So, or within that same topic, you can have both uh, those actions. So you need to define uh, those first. So what I usually do is I go to like a mind map um, applications. Uh, Miro is the one that I'm using. I use uh, uh, sometimes. You can use just, uh, I think it's called Miro. Let me click on that. Yeah, so you can look at here and you are, you're basically creating these mind maps. Let me see if they have uh, examples here. Yeah, something like you you start. So this will be your topic, right? So topic and here are the conversation that I want to have. This is when you're talking with your business user. This is what you would be doing. You would be going in there and saying, because if you go directly to them and say, oh, I'm going to building this, that's not going to work, right? They're not going to like it. You need to jot it down. So the way you do is you can do it in uh, VG also, if you have VG or any other software tool that, that you have, but basically um, process mind mapping uh, thing. So start with there and then you talk multiple questions. Those are your topics and then go from there. Um, so here, uh, let me go ahead and create a new one. I'm just gonna call, uh, Syntax, oh, S-Y-N, Tex 2021 demo, okay? So language, uh, e two years ago, it were, there were only like eight languages there, but it's now gone a lot. Another round of languages is gonna be added October timeframe uh, coming up uh, between October and I think first quarter of next year. Uh, there's a bunch of other languages are in, uh, uh, like on, on a schedule to be added. Um, so I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna pick up uh, the default English here, uh, where you go, US. And then environment, if I had another environment, then I would uh, pick up. In this case, I'm gonna go with default. That's another conversation about like uh, why you need to create a new environment. Um, this is my personal tenant. So I'm, I'm just don't have a lot of resources here. So I'm just keeping it on default. So once I do that, um i go ahead and create this used to take good amount of time because it it re it required you to create a database behind the scene because everything that you're doing is stored in the database it's called uh, dataverse and so now it takes literally less than a minute but but it used to take pretty long time Okay, so it's uh, still saying a few things are being built, but uh, explore block bot. So you can see uh, this is the bot name right here, right? Syntax to 2021 demo. And if I go over here, I should see. Uh, so so it's, it's, it's doing, uh, it's, it's not complete, but at least it's giving you option to uh, start. Uh, it's coming up, there you go. Uh, again, refreshed. But like I said, this used to take long time and then it went down to five minutes and now it's literally within a minute, uh, you have this. And 
so we got you create a new bot right so now i go to topics this is important as you can see these are the system um these are called system topics you cannot make uh, i don't recommend changing you can change but i don't recommend uh, doing anything with this one uh this is always on and here is the uh, uh lesson like uh sample topic for you to learn so a simple topic let's go ahead and click on it and it says that um this is the name of the bot this is the trigger trigger uh if i say store hours right the bot will wake up and actually let me go ahead and also uh so if i do this i'm gonna get a response so this is your editor uh, when you're testing, this is where you test. You don't have to deploy and go somewhere else and test it. You can test it natively here. Um, did I click on enter? And it says, basically what it did was it got triggered because one of the trigger is store hours and see it says like five to 10. I, I, I recommend, uh, I know even though it said five to 10, but they only put five. I usually go with five for sure minimum. And these are, you don't want to write a big sentence because no one is going to write, I want to do this, right? They want to say status of my ticket or tickets or an issue with computer. So the phrases, find phrases are the one that you need to be. So this is your key. If you got, if you get this right, your bot will get triggered. Otherwise, uh, no. Right, I wouldn't understand, and so it will have to go to, hey, I didn't understand. Can you? How can I help you? Here are the options. So that those are some best practices. You don't want to write a full sentence here. So that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, limited to less than ten words. I actually say limited less than five words in order to be super, uh, 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 what do you call, uh, uh, accuracy. In order to get better accuracy, I would say less than five. But the recommendation document, if you read the documentation, I think it says like less than. Uh, five or 10 words. Uh, I, I, I like to go less than that. Okay, so, all right, uh, any questions or, all right, that's cool. Uh, so, all right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do track changes and I'm gonna type it in uh, store hours. And even though I see I intentionally didn't type properly, but there is a fuzzy logic, uh, all of those matching AI built in there. So they was able to find like, hey, I found a closer word. And so that's why. And so see how earlier now it, it's telling me where I am. So it's it visually it's telling me where I am, right? So it's, it's here. Now it's asking for a yes or no. So I, if I say yes, it'll go to this one and this branch will get executed. And at the end, there's a survey, most likely. Um, uh, redirect, uh, where, okay, where am I? Okay, yeah, here's a, a survey. And then you just continue, right? So if we do 10, five, because thanks for your feedback. Um, can I help you with anything else? Basically, always you make the best practices, you display, someone asks you like um, ticket, let me help you find um, your ticket status and then ask them a question. Don't just act like, don't ask them just a straight question. So it's, it's good to uh, have a statement and then ask a question. Statement and have ask a question as a best practice. All right, so we're gonna do, um, I can uh, no thanks on go. And so you can go back and look into this uh, there, these are these topics. You can reverse engineer. Uh, like you can look in to see how they're doing, and then you can start creating based on your need. Um, what other things? Uh, so if I were to create a new topic, right? So um, I think I said HR related. So let's see onboarding, right? Uh, new hire onboarding because I just recently was uh, hired. So it will say benefits, B-E-N-E-F-I, benefits, um, um, uh, vacation policy, um, sick days, um, uh, what else? Uh, uh, pay period, right? 
um, uh, support number. All of those could be trigger for this. And so now once we get the trigger, uh, I then you go to the authoring. So, so I'm when we're trying to author uh, a topic. So I'll go to authoring canvas uh, should come up here. Okay. Oh, do you know what? Before he used to not save the topic, you have to say, eh, that's not saved. So anyways, so it's always getting better. Um, so here, um, welcome uh, uh, to uh, uh, onboarding bot. I mean, it can be anything, but uh, if I can type, Okay, uh, how can I help you today? All right, uh, then I can say test bot and uh, okay, so test bot, so all right. Actually, I need to save first and you will understand. And now if I say, um, I don't know. Uh, let's just try policy, see if it picks it up. Or vacation. There you go. Welcome to onboarding bot. Uh, how can I help you today? Right. Uh, and obviously you could put a question mark in here. And that's just the formatting. All of a few of these are there. Um, another thing on this is uh, styling is very limited, right, for now. But you can use markdown language, which is, I find it hard to, for, it's not a citizen developer, but basically if you put a pound, uh, it, it reads as a um, uh, header. Uh, there's commands in there. So I can put the link to all uh, my references. I think I have already, I already have it. Anyone is interested, they can uh, look into that. Okay, so that's on the standalone side. And then if I need to create a, a connect to Power Automate, which is that workflow, right? Then you add a new say, and you say if you add, you can ask a question, this is call and action. Call and action is where it's calling uh, Power Automate. So you can create, I already have a couple of these, right? Uh, um, uh, the Azure VM administration where reboot, restart, login, whatever. And then uh, if not, if you want to create a new one, then you can create, just create new. And then it, go, it takes you to Power Automate. It's very simple as like creating Power, Power Automate, right? What's important is this trigger. Uh, Power Virtual Agent, it's getting input from Power Virtual Agent, and then it's passing an output from here. So in between, you can do whatever. And here input, you can have three types of input integer text and I think date are yes, no. And then out, output, most of the times you were passing a uh, string back to Power Automate. So uh, that's how you do it. I know we have very less time here. I wanna jump into uh, Dataverse for Teams and then uh, if we get time, um, I can answer a few questions. All right, um, so save. Uh, it's doing nothing, but... Uh, Okay, so the next one is that's doing it uh, standalone power virtual isn't. Uh, one thing I would say here is if I go back, uh, do that, if I go back here, publishing here, see, these are the channels, these are the host where you can publish this uh, bot. I can create a temporary site, right? Uh, I can publish and And if I grab this demo site, you will be able to see, if I paste it here, it's already available in the internet. So you guys can click on the link and then try that bot. I mean, basically there's nothing in there for now, right? It's just a quick, quick demo, but that's, uh, it's live now. So that fast, um, you can create outside publicly facing. Uh, so, all right. Uh, yeah, now I, if I go there, like, I mean, I can definitely uh, policy again. Uh, it will, it'll give me just that, well, how can I help you today? So that's what you will see at the experience. All of these can be customized, right? Um, but I'm not gonna go there now. 
Uh, okay, so anything on here? Um, the AI functionality that I was talking to you about is this one right here, uh, topic overlap and topic suggestion. I would go ahead and create that immediately, right? Enable, save, and then behind the scene, anytime after some time, the AI will understand it's going through your convert and it will recommend also, there's a way to recommend Hey, by the way, people are asking these questions. It, it, it can go and look at the um, transcript, the conversation transcript and say, people are asking this and they're not getting answered. Do you want to create a topic? So anyways, so that's that's this is very new feature I just added, I don't know, maybe a month or two ago. Um, and others, oh yeah, you can also publish. Uh, obviously, when you're publishing, you can publish into Teams, Facebook, other different channels, website, you can host it on a website. In fact, actually, um, India's government has uh, Sati, I think is the name of the bot they publish, and it's it's used, it's it's created in Power Virtual Isn't. Uh, it was created last year, I believe. It. Oh yeah, Accenture did that uh, project. So, it, I mean, millions of people are coming in and asking different questions. Uh, so it's, it's built on uh, Power Virtualism. What else? Uh, and analytics, obviously, we're not going to have anything in here because this is a brand new bot. But here you can see, yeah, this is where topic uh, triggering, uh, customer satisfaction, session, billing, uh, all of those details are there. I usually go to summary and you get enough information there. Uh, skills entities are a little bit different. Uh, I'm I can I wouldn't be able to cover that today. Uh, but let me any questions on standalone Power Virtual as it? It's super easy to create, like, like as you saw, right? So um, go ahead and play with it. Um, if you have Office 365 login, you can get a, a trial. Don't shy away from signing, getting sign up, signing up on the trial, um, and see how long you can extend. Uh, I've been extending for a long time. Any questions on Power Virtual Agent before, I mean, uh, standalone Power before I go over to Teams? Okay, all right, I'll take that and no. So this one is, uh, I'm on Teams, right? Uh, Microsoft Teams. Um, what you can do is you can create, uh, so Power Virtual Agent app, uh, there is a Teams app called Power Virtual Isn't. So that's what you need to add first. So if I don't have, if I didn't have it here, I would have to go to apps and, oh, not here, sorry. I would have to go here and then I would have to, well, you can go from there also, but uh, then I would go here and then I would uh, install that. It will ask you to add and you you add it. And once you add it, it will you can uh, pin it, right click on it and you can pin this and it will be on your left rail. So now you only click on it, it says um, you want to create a bot. So let's go ahead and create a new bot here. Here, what we need to understand is Teams honors uh, OMG security model, which is owner, member, and guest. Guest is anybody who is coming from outside, right? You shared, you invited some external users, they will be guests. Um, owners and members within your organization. So typically that's the scenario. Uh, you want to create, so Dataverse is another animal, right? So this one has now, uh, I mean Teams. In Teams, when you're creating an app uh, or Power Virtual isn't or bot, first time you add and create an app, it creates an environment in that Teams inside of Teams. So it's creating an environment with the Dataverse database, database called Dataverse for Teams, which is free. If you have Office 365 license, you get that free with, um, uh, with, with Teams. The caveat is you get it free, but it has to stay within Teams. You cannot use that outside. If you want to use it on a website or Facebook or another app, you cannot. It has to stay inside. That's why they're giving you for free, right? Um, the, there's a limit on the size of the database. You get up to two gigabyte and you can only create one environment per teams. But obviously you have, in that case, you just create a new team and then you create another environment, right? So um, 
you do get like uh, yeah the the limit is two gig uh, record uh, million record but anyways so those are just at a high level so i can pick uh, one let's say pva demo so what i'm what is asking is hey pick a team where you want to install that bot where you want to host that bot that's what it's asking so i can name it same because these are just standalone uh, uh syntax um pva demo i can barely type my keyboard is a little bit high i need i can lower it down a little bit okay and so i'm going to install that on this team right so that's why uh, this is the name of uh micro name of teams i know team team that's just naming is so it's gonna take a few seconds here. Um, and anytime you have the bot hosted inside of Teams, uh, it has a database behind the scene, the database. So it's already available in your, you don't need to buy uh, another license. So licensing is a little, little, little convoluted with Power Platform. Uh, it requires a good, good session for sure. So it just popped up here and said, hey, something got created. It's still creating. Uh, let me see. Um, as soon as this goes away, yep, uh, should be good. I probably got an alert saying the bot has been created. Uh, I'll let, let it go through a few things. So yeah, OK, meaning the uh, behind the scene, the environment was created, uh, create a new bot. And so now I can go and create, let's say, PBA demo, uh, English language, and then go over. All right, the experience is still I'm inside. See, even though I'm inside of Teams, right, I'm getting similar experience that I was getting on web, and it's getting kind of better every time. The same thing I uh, we saw that earlier, right? Same, same pop up. I'm gonna say explore, explore bot, and same, same similar experience, but it's this is inside of Microsoft Teams. Okay, if I look at the topic here, same team, so I could create. Uh, yeah, other thing is I can share this uh, bot with uh, someone, right, that can, uh, that will, uh, so that'll show you here from here. Um, so if I go over to home, uh, I can share with someone, uh, let's say, And I'm going to, uh, uh, they can also look at the transcript. The transcript is nothing but uh, the transaction between bot and the person, the, the conversation between um, bot and the person. And you can see that usually after an hour of being, because there are certain jobs that has to run, um, it's, it's stored somewhere on the Microsoft side and the job runs and picks up and put it puts it in your database. It's actually pretty good. Uh, there is a Power BI report that uh, that you can point to the database to create the transcript. So uh, that Microsoft published about a month ago again. I, I, I will recommend you, everybody to, if you wanna learn more, right? Uh, obviously everybody wants to, hopefully you guys are interested, you go to, um question mark and blogs so that's where uh, new announcements and everything come in i highly recommend uh, go you can learn start from there and it takes you to the documentation the microsoft doc site uh okay uh where were you we okay i'm doing a time check here i have 10 minutes um, any questions for me? Uh, hopefully this was useful. I know I had to rush, but um, this is how it goes always. I'm trying to uh, cramp um, a lot of content in an hour is uh, not, not justice to anyone. <laughs> but hopefully you were able to kind of kind of get an overview of uh, what Power Platform is, uh, 
Power of Virtual isn't, right? Uh, where you can use some use cases, some scenarios. Uh, hopefully you're finding this useful. Any, any questions? Oh, this crowd is quiet. I blame on end of the day. <laughs> I, I do have a question for you, but um, if you have any, if you want to cover any other topics that you, you're really passionate about, we can go ahead with that first. Uh, no, I think, um, I, I mean, uh, high level, I don't think I'll have time to uh, dive in, take a deep dive into another topic. Uh, I'm looking at the time here and we have like nine minutes. So I'd rather uh, start with, with, with question. Okay. Uh, so if anybody in the audience has any questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, I'll start off with one. Um, okay, there is one. Is there any use case of the Power Platform, other tools except Power BI for data analyst and data science? So, okay, I see. Is there any use case of the Power Platform, other uh, other tools except Power BI? Okay, um, so the first one, if, if I'm understanding the question, feel free to come on mute. Uh, sometime that's that's easier to kind of have that conversation. Um, other tools except Power BI for data. Okay, for data analysis and data science. For, that's a different area, right? So this is focus on low code. It's extension of those data science, uh, data analytics. There's no tool. Um, if, if you're asking if Power BI can do data anal analysis and data science, then I would say no, because you have to inject AI to find the prediction, like uh, whether, and the, you, you have a model. And so Power Platform does have an AI model where you can train, right? You, need, you can train based on certain data and then your probability more accurate data you provide, your, your probability goes up when uh, from a prediction point of view. Uh, but if you're talking, I mean, solely about it's Power BI can support um, data science, uh, I would say no. It's just a presentation layer. Uh, the analytics, the finding, the learning, Power BI cannot do. You're displaying data, right? So you have to have some kind of AI. So that's where the Azure Cognitive Services computer vision uh, comes into play. And uh, within Power Platform, there are certain components. Uh, the AI builder, one of the components AI builder, so you can leverage that. But I think you will hit a limit and say like, no, nope, we gotta go next level. So hopefully I answer your question. If not, like I said, feel free to come uh, uh, out of mute. All right. The next one, uh, Kritika, you wanna uh, sure. me tell me which one I can go? Um, do you suggest Power Platform for startups that is interaction heavy in terms of graphics and animation? No, again, that's a different topic, right? So um, if you are into, for a startup who is trying to automate business processes, let's say creating for a banking system, like you're creating, uh, there are certain manual steps. Uh, someone comes in, check in, check out or log of things uh, or, or whatever there's a lot of these manual processes like or even like paper right you have paper uh, a lot of lot of times we have that i'm pretty sure in nepal there's even even more right so things are getting better but you'll see a lot of those so in that in, in that area i would say yes right but for graphic animation power i don't think power platform is the right right tool The next question comes from Pankaj who asks, have you tried Dialogflow from Google? What do you prefer to use Dialogflow or Power BI when you only have to build a chatbot and no other integration is required with Power BI or something similar? Yeah, I have not used uh, Dialogflow, but uh, if you're asking about um, if you need an integration, with any other system, right? Not only Power BI, but it could be even like it could be Google uh, integration or Twitter or Facebook or Dropbox or any of your line of business application. It could be your SQL server that is that you have where you have all the data or Oracle server. Then uh, because of the, the, 
the humongous number of connectors that's available in the ecosystem, Power Platform ecosystem, that's what I would choose uh, 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 Power Virtual isn't or Power Platform basically. Hopefully I answered your question. I know all of these questions are a little uh, different, but uh, I'm definitely appreciating you guys are asking questions. Uh, I see another question from Nitin who asks, can we integrate it in website using the API of the chatbot and resize and redesign content? And does it affect the security of the app? Uh, this is a good question. So, okay, so can we integrate it into website using API of the chatbot? Not using API of the chatbot, but uh, yeah, you can resize and redesign. Uh, there is a, it's actually just a one line of code um, and you can define uh, the kind of like an uh, embedded URL it gives you and you can put it on your website. Um, it doesn't have an API per se, uh, but if you want to interact, uh, there are ways, uh, but it, it's gonna be, at that time, it's not a citizen developer tool. But uh, I would say instead of kind of going into the API or getting directly access to the, the all of these are stored in like the topics and everything is stored in the database, right? And the, it has behind the scene, it has a database and that's where the, this, is, this is being used. So you can talk, but the better approach will be getting that embedded URL and then um, and defining your height with uh, your UI, it, the icon, right? Uh, default icon is this. I can change the default icon. I think it's here somewhere. Yeah, so I can change the, the icon. I can use emojis. Uh, so all of those, and then you can put it on uh, your website. Uh, Hopefully I answered uh, the question. His follow-up question is, what type of application should use Power Platform? Oh, yeah. If you're talking about where the bot can be hosted, then if it's a standalone, which is where the, if you're creating in bot, then you can use, uh, so go to channels. Let's see. These are all the channels that are available today. So you can put it on Teams. You can put it on a demo site, which is what I pasted earlier, right? And or Facebook or... Uh, even like on Cortana, I don't know how you'd host on Cortana, but um, these are other other channels that you can host. But if you create inside of Teams, why you would want to create outside versus inside Teams? Inside of Teams is free. That's why you want to. But then there's a limitation. It's only publishes in Teams, and you have to publish that as an app for other people to use. Whereas if you create outside, then this is the one that you can host it in your line of business application. You may have a custom app dev, right? A custom pays, or you may have other portal and you can creating it uh, uh, bot this way will allow you to um, uh, basically uh, publish anywhere. And these are the supported uh, 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 channels to publish. All right. Uh, we have one more question from Raj who asks, instead of having predefined message, can we direct different response according to the user? Good question. Uh, you can definitely do that, right? So the way I would do is, I don't want to create, uh, let's say here, um, I go to where bot authoring, you can have like a, Greetings, right? So, okay, not here. But uh, if you go to Teams, so, okay, uh, one more. Uh, you can definitely do uh, who is logged in. You can require uh, login, and then you can see who was logged in, and you can greet, and based on that, you can have different messages. But it's much easier to do in Teams because it already allows you um, this option called user, which is kind of like a system uh, variable. Uh, you can get that. So what you would do is I would go over here, I'll add this one and um, uh, ask a question and uh, uh, where is the user, user, user? Not that one. Okay, I picked up wrong one. So add, uh, not that one, so misses. And I think here, somewhere in here, yeah, there you go. So I can store the user who logged in and then I can say if the user, and then I can pass that 
I, I wouldn't be able to do here because if I do it, then let's say you have 100 people in your organization, then uh, you would have 100 branches. That's not the ideal way to do it. I would just create in here after picking up a user ID, right? I would pass that over to Power Automate. Yeah, I'll pass that over to Power Automate and let Power Automate, you, map, you have a mapping of the, this title will, will get uh, this uh, greeting or this you, these users will get this greeting. And then you will pass that over to Power Automate and then they will return, hey, here's the greeting for this user. And then you, you, you pass that. So I think that's how I would do it. Um, I know it's uh, just top of my head. All right, I guess that was our last question. We're at the top of the hour. Thank you everybody for joining in. This was Uday Adhikari, Senior uh, Manager, Business Integration and Architect at Accenture. Please feel free to reach out to him if you have any queries. I'm sure you can access him at. Right here. Oh, here are a couple of things. I know we're wrapping up. Uh, if you want to learn more about Power Platform, Power Apps, uh, CC, just to Twitter, uh, hashtag. And here is uh, this. I can share this slide with uh, you and maybe uh, you can uh, share with everybody. And here are a couple of some references that I went through coming in. And then this is also another good show. And you can follow me on Twitter at Uday Adhikari right here. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, kind of share my uh, learning here. Thank you, Uday.